we made it to Lisbon. Lisbon is commonly referred to as the San Francisco of Europe. From the 25th of April bridge that resembles the Golden Gate, to the cable cars, and even built on seven steep hills. Whew. Hello everyone, my name is Jay Lin, and I'm a travel creator based in New York City. In this video, I'll be sharing everything we ate, including the best pastel donadas, everything we saw, and where we stayed. First things first, let's start off with the room and hotel tour. We're staying at the Ivins, which is in the Cialdo area. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. When I was reading up on where to stay in Lisbon, this area, Alfama and um, what is the area called? Bairro Alto. I think that's what it's called. That one's also like a super central area that has a bunch of restaurants and like very touristy areas. We're staying here for three nights and then we're going up to Porto and then spending another three nights there. But let me give you guys a quick room tour and then get on with our day. We have a nice cozy room walking in. There's a bathroom over here with a standing shower. I love standing showers, so this is perfect. And there's also a full length mirror. I love this. There's the mini bar area. Or not mini bar. <laughs> there's a fridge, a mini fridge. And then in here, there's a coffee station. And this is the bedroom. My favorite part has to be this balcony situation. It's so cute. So we got off our flight pretty early in the morning. Our flight was delayed a little bit, but we still arrived at 9 a.m. We were one of the first few flights to land in Lisbon, so customs was super fast. I was reading online that it takes one to two hours to clear customs, but it took us maybe five minutes to go through. And then from the airport to our hotel, we took a taxi. Our Uber was definitely cheaper. It was like 11 euros versus our taxi was like 25 euros. The Uber pickup was not at the arrival terminal, so we didn't want to walk all the way back up, so we just took a taxi. It was about 20-ish minute ride. It, there was a little bit of traffic, but usually it takes like 15 to 30 minutes max. Checked into our room, freshened up a little bit, and then headed straight to breakfast. We're eating at Deer Breakfast, which is a pretty popular spot. There's a lot of good brunch spots in this area that's walkable. That one was just like around the corner, just down the hill. And it's beautiful if you can get a seat at the balcony. I would highly recommend that because you get a nice view of the streets and the trams going up and down. We got the salted pancakes, maple syrup, bacon, eggs, and avocado. And now that we're done with breakfast, we're gonna go sightseeing for the day. windy today we're checking out some historical landmarks it's so nice today 50 degrees it's just a little bit windy right now that's all reminds me of the bay okay we found some lime scooters and we're about to take it down along the water and ride down all the way to the bridge After riding around and exploring on our e-scooter, we finally made it to Time Out Lisbon. I would highly recommend checking this market out. There's a ton of foods that you can try from desserts to fresh seafood, Asian food, and of course, Portuguese food. We're currently at the top of the elevator tram where you can pay to ride up and down. It only takes you up and down the hill because it is a little bit steep, but we did walk it because it was a long line. I think it costs about $4 per person. I would highly recommend just walking it and then taking pictures of it because it is super cool to see when it goes up and down. Also, there's so many steps around Lisbon, so wear comfy shoes. We walked over to a nearby coffee shop called Fabrica just to get our caffeine fix and to get off our feet for a little bit. There's a couple locations around the city and they're also a roaster as well. So for my coffee lovers out there or wanting to buy it for friends or family, I would definitely recommend grabbing a bag. So after this, we went back to the hotel. I think the coffee here is more acidic than I'm used to, so it hurt my stomach a lot. So we just went back to the hotel to kind of hang out. And then when my stomach felt better, we went out for the night to grab a quick bite. Next morning, we had breakfast at our hotel since it was included. The bathroom here is stunning. The food was delicious. And then we hopped on our e-scooters and continue where we left off. Just got to the bridge here. It's so 
so bright. I don't even know if you guys can see that. We rode Lime Scooters all the way over here from our hotel. I think it's about three to four-ish mile ride. We are riding to the Bellum Tower, which we still have um, maybe about a mile left. The Museum of Modern Art is super close to here as well, so we're gonna stop by that to check it out because the architecture outside is stunning. Um, there's a bike trail along the water, so it's super easy to follow. You can bike or you can scooter. There's a lot of people running as well. But yeah, it's been pretty fun. It rained a little bit earlier. We're kind of under a rain cloud, but it's super sunny now, and it looks so beautiful. Look at our scooter, scooter gang. And he's time lapsing on his scooter. This is my ride right here. We made our way over to the Museum of Modern Art and the views were stunning. You can even go up to the rooftop area for free to get a higher vantage point. And then there was a huge rain cloud coming you can see here on the left. So we made our way across the bridge into the neighborhood of Belém where we walked around, explored a little bit, saw all the beautiful tiles and got to try my very first pastel de nada. Pastéis de Belém is a must. It dates back to the early 19th century during the Liberal Revolution where in an attempt at survival, someone from the Geronimo's Montessori offered sweet pastries for sale in the shop, now known as Pastéis de Belém. They still use the original recipe to this day and it is delicious. So we just waited in line for the pastéis de Belém and I got three Portuguese egg tarts. We got in line at 4.30 and it's 4.42 we just got out so the line moves super quickly. We're gonna head across the street to the other famous Portuguese egg tart place and compare them. Stay tuned for the comparison. I'm so excited. This is supposedly like the original place to get it so I'm excited to try it. Okay, we're doing our pastel taste test. We brought it back because it started pouring. Like we didn't even get to go to the Belém Tower because it just started dumping on us. It's still super warm though. We took an Uber back. It was pretty quick. If you're taking it to go, they have cinnamon packets for you, which is so cute. I love cinnamon. Is that too much? Oh my gosh, that looks so good though. It smells so good. Okay, this one is the one from this place. Oh my gosh, it's so warm. Mmm. <laughs> Crispy, sweetness, perfect balance, everything. All right, this one we can get our own. And it comes in a sleeve like this if you get uh, three or more. That one sounds equally as crispy. This looks like a uh, down top. Mm -hmm. We love Chinese egg tarts. Mmm. Both are really good. Can't, can't lose either way. Bom dia! We made it to the train station. We're heading to Porto now. We spent the last two days in Lisbon kind of walking around exploring the area. I definitely want to come back next time. I feel like I can spend weeks exploring just this city alone. We're gonna go through the train experience now and take you guys along for the ride. We purchased our tickets online on railninja.com. It was a super easy process and I would recommend booking in advance as seats can fill up. I would recommend arriving to the station about 30 minutes prior to departure. Also, the newer trains have the departure along with your carriage number on the side of the door, so be sure to look out for that in order to know where you're going to be sitting. There are two stations in Lisbon. We departed out of Santa Apollonia, which is closer to the city center, so be sure to keep that in mind. I also booked us business class seats because it was not too much more than the economy seats, and we wanted a table that faces each other like this. We got a little table workstation. Just free Wi-Fi. Overall, I had a really positive experience. The seats were super comfy. They also have food for you to purchase on board, 
would recommend bringing food so you can save a little bit of money on that and also have a proper meal. It was a three hour ride. I took a quick nap and next thing I knew, I was in Porto. Officially arrived in Porto. We just got off the train. It took three hours. I literally slept the entire way. We're at the station right now. We just got dropped off and we're gonna head to our hotel now. back in Lisbon. We arrived kind of late. Our train was delayed. We're heading to our hotel now and we have just enough time for dinner and then we're flying out early tomorrow. The area that we're staying at according to Google is called the Lisbon City Center and I would say this area is a lot more like businessy. The area that we were staying at in Caldo was perfect. It's literally walking distance from everything you need to um, see all the sites and stuff. It's right near the water and when you step out there's tons of restaurants and shops whereas this city center area is a lot further from the Caldo area. It's about a mile and a half to two miles just walking distance. That pretty much wraps up this Lisbon vlog. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions below. I'll be sure to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in Porto.